this is my show. I'm finding stuff out that you want to know. Just ask me a question that I don't know. That's why finding stuff out is the name of the show. So just give me a shout and we'll figure it out with the help of some friends and the fun never ends on. Finding stuff out, finding stuff out, finding stuff out. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Welcome to Finding Stuff Out, the show where you send in your questions and I find out the answers. Here's the first question. Oops, sorry about that. Here's the first question. It's from... This is embarrassing. My mom's making my favorite meal tonight. Lasagna. I know you can't smell it, but I can. And it's driving me crazy. Would you let me finish? Here's the first question from Yayata. Why do we have to eat? The short answer is... Person, dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. Because our parents say we have to. Okay, Mom. But I guess that's not the answer that you're looking for, or the one that Sora is looking for. How long can you go without eating? Maybe it depends on whether it's nothing or this, a sardine sundae. <laughs> Okay, I don't know why we eat, or how long we can go without eating, but by the end of the show, I'll find out the answer to those questions and other stuff about food and nutrition, like... Why do we have a tongue? Well, I know that we need it for speaking, and it's useful for sealing envelopes. Speaking of tongues, that reminds me of a really fun test you can do. Try sticking out your tongue and touching your nose at the same time. If you can do it, that means you're really smart. Try it now. These guys can do it. Are you doing it? Were you able to do it? Here, watch me. I bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> anyway, I checked. And besides helping us speak, lick envelopes, and make jokes, our tongue is an important part of how we and other creatures eat. For some animals, especially ones that don't have hands, their tongues let them hang onto their food. And it works for us, too. Our tongues are covered in tiny, nubbly thingies that scientists call papillae. They help us grip our food. Some of those papillae contain taste buds, which can sense different tastes, such as sweet, salty, bitter, or sour. And that leads to our next question. Why do girls have more taste buds than boys? La, la, la. Duh, girls have more taste buds than boys do, so I can enjoy this lovely lollipop more than a boy can. Mm. Who says girls have more taste buds? I think boys do. Actually, they're both wrong. There was a recent study done in Denmark. That's the country where Vikings came from long ago. <laughs> and it shows that there's no real difference in the number of taste buds that boys and girls have. But there is a difference in the way boys and girls taste. Boys and girls both taste good to me. Excuse me. I didn't mean as in eating boys and girls. I meant how boys and girls judge taste differently than each other. Ah! Hey, what's he doing here? Get your own show. Yeah! Now, where was I? Oh, right. Girls can taste both sweet and sour better than boys can. So a lemon would taste more sour to a girl, but an ice cream cone would taste sweeter. Mmm, tasty! Need some sweetening. Much better. And speaking of taste, here's a question from Justin. Why does junk food taste so good? Hmm, interesting question. Oh, the sacrifices I make for science. Person? Yes, Mom? Don't spoil your appetite. Okay, Mom. How do parents know what you're thinking of doing before you even think it? That's a good question for finding stuff out. As for junk food, the reason it tastes so good is because of all the salt, sugar, and fat they put in it. This calls for a dietitian. She knows about the things we eat, the ones that are salty and the ones that are sweet. Here's Joelle Imon. Oh, 
Oh, junk food. My favorite. And yes, it's all junk. <laughs> Why is junk food called junk food? Junk food, well, if you think of the word junk, what comes to your mind? Uh, garbage or like just, just junk. Something you know? useless, yeah, right? Yeah, something useless. Well, that's the same for junk food. It means it brings to your body nothing useful. Let's okay. say you take that donut, for example. Right. A donut like this contains about one teaspoon of fat and eight sugar cubes. All that plate is the amount you need in a day. So we're only supposed to eat this much fat and sugar in a day. Yeah, so a donut would be like a quarter of your needs in sugar. So that's a lot. What about a muffin? It's similar to a donut in some ways. Is that healthier? You're in for a big surprise. If it's a commercial muffin, let's yeah. say, it it's actually almost two donuts, sometimes more. What? Yeah. That's it's really crazy. hard to tell just by looking at the food. I'll make a comparison with healthy food for you. Okay. If you take those seven strawberries, mm -hmm. you have enough vitamin C that you need in a day to keep your tea and gums healthy. You get only two sugar cubes. And how much fat? None. No Surprise, fat? Surprise, no fat. Wow, so potato chips are my favorite junk food. So how do those compare to the strawberries? To get exactly the same amount of vitamin C from potato chips, yeah. you would need to eat six small bags. They actually contain 27 teaspoons of fat and all that sugar. That's a big bag it's of potato chips. It's more than what you need in a day. Well, I guess I should lay off the potato chips a bit then. Yeah, that's <laughs> what junk food is. So how do kids know what is good to eat and what is bad? The food companies, they put food labels on the package. Right. So you get to know how much fat and how much sugar and how much of the other nutrients that there is in the food. Well, thanks for helping me out with all this junk food it stuff. It was a pleasure. Will you come back for my great challenge? Sure. Well, now I know why they call it junk food, but to find out why that bad stuff tastes so good. I'm here at Nova Taste, where they make flavors for all kinds of food and drinks. And this is Dr. Luke Haffenden, who's a food scientist. Hi, Harrison. Hi, sounds like a cool job. Can you launch bacon into outer space? Of course not, but we can make about anything taste like bacon. You can make a bacon beverage, bacon bubble gum, bacon candy, bacon cookies, even come up with a bacon perfume. Huh. Here, try this. It's bacon flavored popcorn. Mmm, it does taste like real bacon. So junk food has a lot of fat, sugar, and salt in it. But did you know food companies add flavors to make it taste better? Wow, are all of these flavors? Yes, they are. There's millions of different flavors that we can come up with because there's about 13,000 ingredients that we can use. Here, have a smell. Mmm, root beer. Here, you can smell it too. All flavors are made with chemicals. Oh, this is good. This smells like bubble gum. In natural flavors, those chemicals come from plants or animals. <laughs> This is an ingredient that's found in coffee. We actually use it to make coffee flavors, but it's interesting to know that it's also found in skunk spray. It's terrible. In artificial flavors, scientists make the chemicals in a lab, often from things we don't normally eat, like petroleum or wood. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, what is that? That's an onion essential oil. That is so bad. Food scientists are also starting to use the flavors they create to make junk foods, well, less junky for you. That's pineapple. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make you taste two great beverages. One has a lot less sugar than the other. Okay. Can you tell the difference? No, no, no. Good. No, no, no. This one has less sugar. No. No, this one has less sugar? Absolutely. They both tasted exactly the same. Exactly. Here, have one. Okay. Mmm, these are good. Well, what you're tasting here is a peanut butter and chocolate cupcake where we've actually not even used any peanuts because we're not allowed to have peanuts here. There's 50% of the cocoa that's been removed and 50% of the sugar. Wow, because of the flavors they added, they were able to use less sugar and fat. And the cupcakes still taste yummy. So now it's time to test out some kids with this healthy grape drink, this horribly smelly onion drink and this weird potato chip drink that I'm making. <laughs> Let's get some. 
Well, now it's time for the taste test. Yeah! And they'll be doing it one by one. Okay, let's try number one first. Mm, grape. Grape. Bubble gum. Grape. Grape. It tastes like grape. Okay, now let's move on to number two. Water. 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 It's just water. Water? And let's move on to number three. <laughs> it's disgusting. It tastes like fish. <laughs> Weird taste. <laughs> Chicken mixed with milk. Squish Brussels sprouts. <laughs> so, how can you explain these results? First of all, when you look at the potato chip drink, mm -hmm. it's not a flavor that you would typically associate with a beverage. Yeah. <laughs> so there was no one that was expecting it, and that's more or less why people were only picking out the salt and the fatty flavors, yeah. and they couldn't really put their finger on it or right. their nose. <laughs> and for the second example, which was the onion drink, mm -hmm. well, as soon as you opened up the bottle, the aroma came out and filled the room. Right. And since taste is 90% smell, Okay your nose was saturated with that onion smell, so you couldn't really taste it properly. Right. As for the grape beverage, right. grape tends to be one of the most popular flavors for kids. Yeah. So that's why, even though there was no purple color, uh -huh. a lot of the kids were able to pick it up properly. Mm -hmm. And it was a healthy version. And I'm glad that, just like you, yeah. the kids liked it. Yeah, well, thanks for taking me on this smelly experience. Well, it can get smellier, so anytime. <laughs> How do we know we're hungry? That question is just eating away at me. And that gives me a good idea for cooking up today's special. Uh-oh, dude, try this at home. Watch the screen carefully and listen too. Ready? Is your mouth watering? That's one of the body's ways of preparing us to eat because the saliva helps break down our food. But guess what? It's a trick. If you salivated, it's because the sounds and pictures triggered a pleasure center in your brain. Dogs salivate when they see food. <sighs> As an experiment, a scientist named Pavlov rang a bell every time he fed dogs in his research lab. <sighs> the dogs got so used to hearing a bell ring every time they got fed, that eventually, Pavlov could make the dogs drool just by ringing the bell without giving them any food. That's why restaurant commercials can make us feel like we want food even when we're not hungry. Why does my stomach crumble? Well, Gigi, I found out that our stomachs always rumble. It's the sound of our muscles in our digestive system, contracting or squeezing. It's just that if there's food down there, it muffles the sound so you can't hear it. But if your stomach is empty, you can hear it. But some people didn't always think we need food down there. What is the food of the future? The Flat Earth Corner. We, food scientists of the past, are making the food of the future. That's why I'm wearing this futuristic outfit, because by the year 2000, everybody will dress like this. And here's what they'll be eating. Future food will be highly processed, better in every way than silly old-fashioned food. Ugh, who needs apples or bananas or carrots or cereal or mangoes or bread? Ugh, that's for the garbage. In the future, who but a raccoon would want that? When we've got these food pills, just one of these three times a day will supply you with all the nutrition you need. No more inconvenient toast, time-consuming cheese, or pesky vegetables. By not having to eat, you'll have lots more time to do more important things, like your homework. Sounds good, doesn't it? Over 100 years ago, some food scientists thought that we could just take pills full of nutrients and not have to eat actual food at all. But nowadays, we know that the human body wasn't designed to just live on nutrient pills. Yum, yum. Would you like some lukewarm simulated chicken? We have a huge digestive system inside us. We need bulk and fiber to keep our insides healthy. Stuff like this. And anyway, 
Food tastes good, so the food of the future will probably be a lot like the food of today. Speaking of digesting, here's a question from Priscilla. What happens to your food after you eat it? First of all, there's a bunch of tubes inside you that process your food. They're called intestines. They're about this big. And guess what? There's this much inside of you. And what your body does with it is incredible. What happens to our food? Well, if it tastes good, first we chew, then we swallow. Down to our stomach, where it's hollow. Enzymes there, break it down. When they're done, it gets passed around to the small intestine, seven meters long, takes nutrients out to make us strong. The large intestine absorbs the water, just like a giant paper blotter. And that, my peeps, is the scoop. And what we can't use turns into poop. Yeah, what we can't use turns into poop. Today, my challengers are Genevieve. Hey. And Kyle. Yeah. And I've also brought back my expert dietitian, Joelle. Yay. So, Genevieve, what is your favorite lunch? My favorite lunch is green cheese sandwich, corn chip with salsa, apple juice, and chocolate cake. And Kyle, what is your favorite lunch? Bacon and sausage pizza with peppermint ice cream and vanilla smoothie. So today's challenge is to guess how much lard and how much sugar is in your favorite lunches. So are you guys ready? Yeah. Go. Al just goes right in and grabs a handful. <laughs> <laughs> Al's done. done. Okay, so now it's time to get your results. Genevieve, what are yours? Nine fat and 30 sugar. Your meal actually contains eight teaspoons of fat and about 31 sugar cubes. So you're Ooh, very close. close. Wow. Congratulations. And Kyle, what are your results? Five yeah. fat, 42 sugar. So for this meal, it should actually be 10 fat, so it's double amount that you guessed, and 21 sugar cubes. <laughs> Looks like Genevieve was closer on this one. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Genevieve might have won this round, but both of their meals were losers. Remember, this is the most fat and sugar you're supposed to have in one day. Genevieve's favorite meal by itself contains half the fat and nearly all the sugar. Kyle is not doing much better with his lunch. It contains two-thirds of the fat and sugar he needs in a single day. Wow. Well, that's... It's that's impressive, That eh? is a lot. Kyle, how about going from this to this? Instead of your fatty and sugary lunch, you could enjoy a pizza pita pocket with veggies and cheese, a soy beverage, and half a cup of chocolate frozen yogurt. Do you like it? Yeah. Yay. And Genevieve, how about going from this to this? Forget all that sugar and fat, and check out this makeover lunch. A grilled cheese sandwich stuffed with salsa, fruits, veggies, almonds, and even some chocolate chips with a small apple juice. Does it look good? Yeah. It looks good, eh? <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> staring at it. So next one we'll be doing is a fast food meal. Go. <laughs> okay, Genevieve, what do you have? I have 10 fat and 25 sugar. Kyle, how did you do? 9 mm. fat, 27 sugar. It actually contains 11 teaspoons of fat and 49 sugar cubes. Wow. And that's why we tend to gain weight whenever we go too often to fast food restaurants. <laughs> so Kyle, you were closer in the sugar and Genevieve mm. was closer on the fat. Mm -hmm. So it's a tie for this round. <laughs> All right, so next one we'll be doing is a snack. It's a yogurt strawberry granola bar and a strawberry kiwi cocktail. And go. go. This looks like a healthy snack, eh? What yeah, do you think? It doesn't look bad. So, Genevieve, what do you have? Three mm. fat and 12 sugar. And Kyle? Mm. Two fat, 17 sugar. And the winner is? I think Kyle was a it's lot closer. Kyle. <laughs> 
It seems like a healthy meal, but it's yeah. full of sugar because it's processed food and cocktail juice. So it was one teaspoon of fat and 22 sugar cubes. It's almost all the sugar you need in a day. It's impressive, eh? That's crazy. And the winner is nobody. It's a tie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, before you guys leave, I have a prize for you. We got carrots. Woo! Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now it's time to answer the questions that started me off on this calorie-reduced but tasty quest. How long can you go without eating? Why do we have to eat? Big answer is... <laughs> to live. So, Yayata, we need food for our bodies to grow and repair themselves and give us energy. Without food, we just couldn't exist. And we couldn't play outside. So to answer your question, Sarah, scientists have found out that we can go without eating for four to six weeks. Harrison, dinner's ready. Lasagna, yes. My favorite, gotta go. What happens to our food? Well, if it tastes good, first we chew, then we swallow. Down to our stomach, where it's hollow. Enzymes there, break it down. When they're done, it gets passed around to the small intestine, seven meters long, takes nutrients out to make us strong. The large intestine absorbs the water, just like a giant paper blotter. And that, my peeps, is the scoop. And what we can't use turns into poop. Yeah, what we can't use turns into poop. 